Okay. So hello all. Uh, this is the second episode of the AP Arrow course. Um, technically the first episode because we do go into AP Arrow in this video. Um, today we'll be talking about Renaissance and the humanism, and the Renaissance and humanism. Uh, once again, this video is by ECDE. ECD is a nonprofit organization. Um, it stands for Every Child is Res Education. Uh, if you do want to support us and do want to support this video, please, please donate. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So I talked about the course um, in the last video. Um, so I told everyone that today we'll be doing a little bit, we'll talk a little bit about the exam itself and how the format is. So let's get into it. Okay, so our goals for the video today, um, we want the viewer to know, to have a deep understanding about the format of the APR exam, right? You want to know what components there are in the exam. Um, and not only that, you should know the tricks that will help you perform well in this test. Um, I do go over a bunch of these tricks on how to like master these tricks, how to master these sections of the test. Um, so yeah, I hope you find these stuff interesting. Um, we do go over background information on the Renaissance. So like uh, middle ages, dark ages, that type of stuff. All right, one thing, one note about this is that um, the dark ages and middle ages really aren't for, um, they're not really that needed on the AP exam. They're not gonna ask you questions about it. If they do, I don't know why, but they wouldn't do it. Uh, I'm only including this so that a it's kind of like a review and a refresher from what you learned from I think seventh grade. So yeah, so that's why I'm doing it. Also, if you do have like say an LEQ or a DBQ about the Renaissance, you can put this stuff in. So yeah, that's why it's very important. So yeah, we'll be talking about the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages and what they were like, and more importantly, how you contrast the Renaissance from the Middle Ages. That contrast is, I think, I consider it as one of the biggest biggest differences in not only AP European history, but human history in general. Just that mindset, that changing of the mindset, I think is one of the biggest things in human history. And we can even see in it now, right? Had that mindset not changed in the from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, like our civilization as we know it may not have existed. So that's such a big topic and we're gonna be talking about that. Um, some key terms that I think we'll go over in this video is uh, humanism, right? Uh, civic humanism and the difference between Northern and Southern humanism. The Northern and Southern uh, Renaissance in general will go over. So yeah, I'm 95% sure that most of you guys, if you guys didn't have any like lectures on it yet, I'm 95% sure that you guys don't know any of these terms. So hopefully you get introduced to them. So some major people and that we will cover in this video is Petrarch, right? Erasmus, Medici family, Michelangelo, Raphael, Da Vinci, Van Eyck, Durer, and Castiglione. Okay, so this, this video itself, um, we're just gonna go really quickly over this. I mean, not really quickly, we'll go like a lot into detail. However, um, you'll see a bunch of other names. Um, keep an eye on them, right? Do take note of these, but you don't have to remember them, okay? These aren't that big names. These are the major names, okay? So remember to, like, remember these names and remember who these people are, what they did, okay? So yeah, let's go. Next, next step, All right? So the first part of the AP Euro exam, the MCQ, the MCQ stands for multiple choice questions, 55 questions in 55 minutes. So essentially one question per minute. And I don't know how you may think this. Some of you think, oh, okay, one question per minute. Um, it's multiple choice, right? It's, it should be pretty quick. It shouldn't take me 55 minutes. Well, it's based on a passage. So they'll give you like a small, like, I like guess small, part of a document, right? Like maybe one or two paragraphs. And then there'll be like four questions on it. So you'll have to answer them, but you'll also have to read the passage. So uh, now you guys may be thinking, wait, if there's a passage involved, then we're definitely not gonna get one minute per question. There's gonna be a little bit more. Well, we'll go, well, what I do, what I did on the test is that I spent 
a good amount of time just reading the passages, just making sure I understand. Because if I can understand the passages, then the questions themselves will be a breeze. Okay, if that makes sense, right? The better you understand the passage, the more easier the questions will be. If you don't understand the passage that well, the questions are gonna be much harder for you because you don't have an idea about what the questions are about. So read the, read the passage really carefully and really strongly. Don't, I mean, obviously you should worry about time, but like you can take a little bit more time on this because answering the questions themselves won't take as much long. So that's what I do. So um, the MCQ, there will be like four, four options, right? A, B, C, D. There will be two that you can instantly say, okay, those two are wrong. Okay, you can cancel those two out. And there's two, and this is a really hard one, because there's two that are precisely really similar to the answer. Two that are super close to the answer, and there's just one that is slightly better. So you have to really watch out for that. If any of you guys have taken the SAT or the PSAT, you guys may know that this is kind of similar, right? Four questions, two are definitely wrong, but two are just so close, and it's like one word that changes the entire thing. Uh, Steve Harvey here, my good friend this meme right or this picture shows how multiple choice questions are like these two are correct these two are wrong right but what are the difference between these two that exactly how the mcq is and that's what you need a master for this so the mcq necessarily won't test you on the facts right they're not going to ask you what is the what uh, name all the royal rulers of Britain during the Stuart dynasty right they're not going to ask you for all that stuff or what is the precise date of the um, what is the precise date of the time the uh, French Revolution started? They're not going to ask you that type of stuff, but you will need a broad understanding of the concept, right? The French Revolution, for example, I use a lot of French Revolution uh, examples because that's a huge uh, subject in Napier. But um, so which of which of the following is not an Enlightenment idea, right? So you need to know how the so a broad understanding means that you kind of know how the French Revolution started, right? You know the ideas that were behind it. So that's what I mean. You don't need to necessarily know all of the dates. You don't need to know every single like detail and every single aspect of the French Revolution, but you need to know a broad, you need to have a broad understanding of the French Revolution and what it was and the impacts, right? Mostly the MC, this AP exam is just gonna test you on how you can apply history, right? That's why there'll be essays to write. That's why that's why um, there'll be like documents, right? That's why they do that. So that they can test your ability to um, analyze and understand these documents of history and understand their importance. And yeah, essentially, you know, get the history out of these documents. So that's why they ask these, that's why they put the documents. I think that they help you, right? You don't need to, because really you just need to learn, you need to have a really deep understanding about how to analyze these documents. You don't really need to focus on uh, remembering all the facts or anything, but you need to have one big skill that you need to focus on, analyzing the documents. If you can analyze the documents very well and you have a, re a decent, pretty good understanding of uh, European history, you will do really well on this MCQ. Okay, next question, next slide. Okay, so we have a practice here, right? So this is, a. if you guys don't know, this says Eminem, right? He, made the song lose yourself pretty popular right so i added like a lyric to it and then there's a question his so let's go into this right his palms are sweaty knees weak arms are heavy there's vomit on his shirt already mom spaghetti he's nervous but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down the whole crowd goes so loud he opens his mouth but the words won't come out Okay, so now we read it, right? So we have kind of an idea of what this is about, right? The, he, Eminem, and in, in this part of the lyric doesn't necessarily say what the thing is about, but you can tell, right? This guy is kind of nervous, right? He's very nervous. Um, obviously, he looks like he's about to perform because this, the whole crowd goes so loud. Um, you can say he's a rapper because he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out what he wrote down, or a poet, whatever one, to drop bombs. Um, so let's read the question. What significance does the phrase mom spaghetti have on the passage? Okay, so let's read, read this. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are ready, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his shirt already, mom spaghetti. Okay, 
So instantly I can already tell mom spaghetti and there's vomit on his shirt already. So we can, you can imply that this vomit is mom spaghetti. So now what would the mom, what would the, why would Eminem add this uh, phrase? The, there's vomit on his sweater already. Well, this is to indicate that he's nervous, right? If you're vomiting, you're kind of nervous, right? That is a sign of like being really nervous. And the rest of the rest of the passage talks about, oh, sorry, wait. So the rest of the passage talks about how he's nervous and he's getting nervous to perform. So vomit on his sweater already gives you an indication that he's nervous to perform and that's why he's vomited. So the first option is spaghetti is a favorite food of the rapper. There's nothing that necessarily says it's a favorite food of his, right? I mean, he has ate it, but like it, there's no comparison, right? He doesn't say he likes it or anything. So I'm pretty sure that's not the answer, right? Um, the mom spaghetti indicates how nervous the man is by highlighting his vomit. That is a good answer, right? That's what we were talking about. The spaghetti is a symbol of hope and thus the rapper due to the food is feeling homesick. Well, he doesn't talk about how he's feeling homesick. He, this does say that this guy's not feeling too well, right? Um, but he, there's no mention of home right? Mom spaghetti, but there's no mention of how he's feeling homeless, homesick, right? He's just feeling nervous. You can't tell he's feeling sick or anything. He's, he's, you can't tell if he's feeling homesick or anything. And spaghetti is the fuel of the rapper, right? I mean, this is kind of true, right? He is, he has ate the food, right? But, right, that doesn't, there's no significance in the passage, right? He's ate food of spaghetti. He ate spaghetti for like dinner, what does that matter when you're doing a, like a rap, right? That doesn't matter at all. So in this, I would probably go with B. And since I made the uh, question up, right, the answer is B. Yeah, so if you guys got B, congratulations. So I just walk you through that. That's how you're supposed to attack um, MCQ. Obviously, I went really, really slow. So we do want to go way faster. But essentially, that's how you want to do it. Okay.